In this video we will take a short look at a full size model of a T5455. It was used for educational purposes and is now located in the military history park in Puka, Slovenia, which has also several different T55s in various stages of preservation. Additionally they have the bridge layer and self-propelled anti-aircraft gun variant of the tank. Furthermore, there will be some basic information and technical data after the walkthrough. So let's get started. Here you can see the idler wheel in front, thus the tracks are moved by the drive sprocket in the back of the tank, which is also the location of the engine. From the side probably easiest feature to distinguish a T5455 from other tanks is the gap between the first and the second road wheel. Now if we stand on the right side of the tank we see something like this. Here you can see the commander, loader and gunner. The loader is the person closest to us, whereas the gunner is looking through the fire control side. Here behind the turret is the radiator, which is folded backwards for a better view on the engine. As you can see, the drive sprocket and every second road wheel are missing on this side of the model. This is what the ammo storage looks from the side of the tank. This is what the ammo storage looks from inside the tank. And here photo from down below, the ammo storage is on the right. Above is the turret ring, which is clearly visible since it's painted white. Note that the ammo storage is actually part of the fuel tanks, so basically the tubes of the ammo are built into the fuel tanks. This also allows us to identify this tank as a T55, because these ammo fuel tanks hybrids were introduced with the T55. Here's a view from down below into the turret with the loader, gunner and commander visible. In this picture you can see the edge of the driver's seat, right in the middle. Next to it are the tanks of the compressed air for starting the engine. Now back again to the outside. Here we have an external fuel tank and an external oil tank. Note that the external fuel tanks on the T54 and fallout models were connected to the main fuel system. Let's move forward. Here you can see the idler wheel. And we are right in the front of the tank now. Here's the main fuel tank. This is probably not an ideal place, but it was one of the best armored places with 100mm. Just second to the turret with 200mm at the front. The main reason to put the fuel tank here is that there was no more room in the tank. The engine took up all the space behind the turret and the turret was loaded with crew and ammo. So basically the only location left was next to the driver. Here we can see the turret from the front which has an infrared searchlight at the top. The gun barrel is of course shortened. We also can see the driver now, who sits next to the fuel tanks and ammo storage. Well, I guess this is probably the best motivation to ensure that he moves the tank in a hull down position. Now on top of the hull, right above the driver position, are two small boxes. Those were the periscopes for the driver in case the vehicle was buttoned up. Here you can see the idler wheel and its ball bearings. And this is the driver from the side. The two black tanks are for the compressed air starter. Now this is the turret from the left side. As you can see it's pretty cramped. At the top you can see the gunner periscope digging out, which is attached to the fire control side of the gunner. Additionally you can see the commander's own infrared searchlight at the top attached to his hatch. Now on this side we can see a bit of the engine and also the drive sprockets that were missing on the other side of the model. Since we completed our tour, now some basic information. The T-54-55 is the most bruised tank in the world. It saw service during the invasion of Hungary, the Arab-Israeli wars, the Vietnam war, the Iran-Iraq war, the Afghanistan wars, Desert Storm, the Yugoslav civil wars and various past and current conflicts in Africa and of course currently in the civil war in Syria. To give you some numbers, the Soviet Union built around 25,000 T-54s and about 5,000 more were built by the Warsaw Pact countries. Additionally, China built about 9,000 Type 59 tanks, which is a T-54 variant. For the T-55, the Soviet Union alone produced about 30,000 and about 16,000 by the Warsaw Pact members. Hence a total of 86,000 tanks. Note, this is one of the lowest estimates. So basically one could say the T-54-55 is the Kalashnikov of tanks. 
Although at first the fuel tank and ammo position may seem quite suboptimal, the T-54 and T-55 were very good tanks. To quote Steven Zaloga on the T-54, by the standards of the 1950s, the T-54 was an excellent tank, combining lethal firepower, excellent armor protection and good reliability in a tank that was lighter and smaller than comparable western designs, such as the British Centurion or the American M48 Patton. On the negative side, the T-54 was forced to rely on heat ammunition in tank engagements, which were not really accurate with the simple fire control system initially used by the T-54. Now to round this up, some technical data on the T-54 and T-55 models. Since the values are mostly identical, I will only note the differences. The total length including the barrel was 9 meters. The length of just the hull was 6.04 meters and 6.2 meters since the T-55. Now the width of the tank was 3.27 meters, the height without machine gun 2.4 meters and 2.35 since the T-55. Now the ground clearance was 0.425 meters. The combat weight was 36 tons. Except for the T-55 AM2B, it was 41.5 tons. This was by the way a Czechoslovak variant. The caliber of the main gun was 100 millimeters. And the engine had 520 horsepower, 580 horsepower for the T-55 and T-55A and 620 horsepower for the T-55 AM2B. The maximum speed was 50 km per hour and the basic range was 510 km for the T-54 and T-54A, 460 km for the T-55 and T-55A and 385 km for the T-55 AM2B. Thank you for watching. Special thanks to Firefly for helping me out on some details for this video and also special thanks to my Patreons who had a substantial financial influence on this museum trip thus making this video possible. So stay tuned and see you next time.